Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be showcasing 10 must have legendary weapons you'll want when taking on enemies and bosses at the new high of Chaos 35. These are the most powerful legendary weapons in the game and what you should be hunting down first at the new prima donna level. I'll be letting you know how you can get your hands on each gun, explain what they do and how you can increase their damage. If you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to, or you could even follow me on Twitter and let's crack into it. We open with the Rain of Arrows, a powerful non-elemental black powder shotgun which has no dedicated drop source, making it best fun for from the shotgun buff bunnies. The Rain of Arrows will rain on your enemy's parade as the ruler of damage from the sky. This isn't your typical shotgun, far from it. Heck, I don't even know what it is. All I can say is it deals some mighty damage. Everywhere you go you'll see a circular marker painted on the floor signalling the drop point for a deadly barrage of arrows. When you pull the trigger a number of arrows burst from its barrel before an onslaught is summoned from the heavens. Both phases deal high damage concentrated within the circular indicator. It consumes 6 or 7 bullets per shot which relates to the amount of arrows initially fired and I found the x 6 variant to be stronger. Where this gun gets even better is with the slightest mag size boost, just enough to give it an extra bullet in the mag, which allows you to utilize both of its barrels. With that ability in your hand, you'll deal double the damage enough to decimate anyone standing in the wrong spot. That includes you, so be careful where you step, and although you might find it consumes a fair bit of ammo, it's certainly worth it. Next up is the Gluttony, a Ferior Pistol that I've only ever seen in Dark Magic, but there's some word it can drop in Frost, but that hasn't happened so far. It has an increased chance to drop from Droll the Troll, who you fight out here in Queen's Gate, after having an ocean party with Mr. Torg. The Gluttony is a powerful weapon and one of the pistols that got buffed instead of nerfed, which made it even better. It's a gun that does its best damage when you throw it, but there's some great damage to be had while shooting too, depending on your variant. Every time you reload, like with all Ferial weapons, you'll throw the gun away, but also throw away half your health. It conjures a life sucking dagger storm at the point of impact, which deals damage relative to what was left in the mag, so the higher the mag size, the more damage you'll deal. Reloads will only take health if it's above 50% and always put it at the midway point. The reload that takes health with it deals more damage than the others but they're strong across the board and because it'll leech health back to you, at worst you'll be in a constant state of half dead or half alive depending on how you look at the glass. Its reload effect isn't just great for damage but will also suck enemies in and barrels too which just adds to the fun. However you use it, you can't go wrong with the gluttony. Next is the Queen's Cry, a pistol which only comes in frost and has an increased chance to drop from the raid boss they call the Maker, but you'll have a much better time by shoving crystals down the bunny's throat. The Queen's Cry fires 1 or 2 bullets per shot, consuming 2 or 3 ammo respectively, and the more bullets the better. It fires at a decent pace and deals consistently high damage, especially when you're buffing both of its damage sources. It isn't your typical weapon dealing spell damage and gun damage which opens a whole new avenue for you to raise its power. The spell damage comes from its crashing meteors which spawn on the odd occasion when you land shots. They come frozen from the sky and perfectly support the regular damage you'll be dishing out. Add those two pieces together and the Queen's Cry is both a unique and powerful legendary weapon. Now it's time for the Rogue Imp, an assault rifle that only comes in fire and is another which drops from the world, making it best fun for by feeding the assault rifle bath bunnies. The Rogue Imp fires at a steady pace but deals high damage, deadly burning enemies until there's nothing left. For its slow fire rate it does overheat relatively quickly but that's not all bad as three wyverns fly from its barrel as it's cooling off and seek out their prey. The wyverns deal area damage and are good at increasing its DPS, essentially providing three bullets worth of damage when you'd normally deal no damage at all. 
It's a great exponent against flesh and manages its ammo well, culminating in a weapon all players can rely on. Time now for the masterwork handbow, a black powder pistol which has an increased chance to drop from Captain Swallow around here in the overworld. The masterwork handbow is a masterpiece in craftsmanship, I mean it was until someone at Gearbox spilled oil all over it and in the mechanism which somehow affected its damage. Nowadays the masterwork handbow is still one of the highest single shot damage dealers in the game and it needs to be because there's only the one bullet in its mag. However, if you hit your shots, that won't be a problem, as its bullet will slot itself back into the chamber on every critical hit. That's a great effect, which can have you rip chunk after chunk out of health bars made incredibly easy with From the Shadows. Those critical hits aren't just deadly to your target, but anyone standing next to them at 6 rounds of ricochet into nearby opponents, often slicing right through them. It also has the highest critical bonus out of any weapon in the game, sitting between 30 and 60%, which is still a lot and can be used to get the most out of certain situations. Now for the live wire, an SMG that only comes in shock. It's a world drop, so the bath bunnies are a good place to get one. Live wire is a damaging SMG, particularly while mobbing. That's thanks to the laser it fires, which likes to play connect the dots with your enemies, they just don't know the other dots yet. Any enemy close enough to the one that's being zapped has a chance for a laser to connect to them too, and receive a zap of their own. That also happens when stabbing enemies, dealing damage relative to that of your melee weapon, which can yield some pretty crazy results. Its laser is powerful due to its high fire rate, which has it constantly tick for damage. That damage can be compounded when in From the Shadows by turning those ticks from a chance to critical to guaranteed critical hits. Overall, it's a gun that has a lot going for it, whether you're shooting or stabbing, it'll help you deal some high damage, which makes it comfortably one of the best SMGs in the game. Next up, another pistol, this time the Automagic EXE, which comes in all the elements but not kinetic with an increased chance to drop from Banshee, who you fight around here in Wheat Wild Dankness. The Automagic EXE is a gun that bludgeons its way to power through bullets. It fires 3 or 4 of them per shot, consuming 2-3 ammo, and when they all land, your enemies will feel it. The difficulty, I guess, is getting them all to land where you want them. Its accuracy is poor, although it can be tightened by aiming, but either way, you'll have an easier time getting maximum damage at close ranges. In saying that, it does come with a tracker dart, which you can use to tag enemies and have its bullets home into them, but I generally avoid that due to the lack of credibility. Yes, that's a real word. The main thing that slows this gun's DPS down is its grandma reload speed, which sits around 3 seconds and it's incredibly slow for a pistol. Avoid the high ammo consumption, low mag size, and slow reload time combo though, and you'll have yourself a deadly pistol. Moving on to the Red Hellion, a shotgun that can come in all the flavors and has an increased chance to drop from the Obsidian Wyvern, who you can find here as part of the Ancient Obelisk in Tangle Drift. The Red Hellion is a shotgun that Sonic would get a lot out of. Looking at the card, it's nothing special, perhaps even underwhelming, but when you're blessed with inner speed, it gets much stronger. That's due to its unique effect, which adds projectiles based on your base movement speed. The pallet count doesn't scale depending on how fast you're actually going, but how fast you can potentially go. Speaking into skills that boost movement speed, equipping armor that boosts it, or proccing the buffmeister will all add to its pallet count and be there every time you fire. That's pretty crazy, and I was able to increase its pallet count by 2.5 times. At its best, it will melt through health bars, but at its worst, i.e. while downed, it will be extremely underwhelming due to all the movement speed you've lost. However, if you back yourself as a speedster, this is one weapon you should definitely have in your arsenal. Moving on to the Liquid Cooling, a frost only weapon that has an increased chance to drop from Lycia in the Ancient Obelisk right around here in Crackmast Cove. Although it was nerfed and nowhere near the powerhouse it once was, the liquid cooling is still one of the game's better pistols. A big key to its everlasting damage is the fact that it's just that, everlasting. 
Landing criticals will reverse the Skulldugger overheat effect, enabling you to dish out long windows of damage and good damage at that. Step monsters with From the Shadows can land criticals consistently, but rarely will any class see it overheat. It comes in both times 1 and times 2 variants, with the latter being best, and by coming only in Frost, it's a good option for Berserkers. It's a weapon that you don't need to favor in order to see some damage, which still makes it a legendary that is well worth having. We end this list of 10 must have weapons at Chaos 35 with the Thunder Anima, a Skulldugger assault rifle that can only come in shock. It's another world drop, so the assault rifle buff bunnies are your best bet. The Thunder Anima is an exponent of the shock factor, with its voltage getting increasingly more powerful the more it overheats. As that overheat threshold reaches close to its maximum, it will send out sharp bolts of electricity which pierce and bounce between targets, dealing more and more damage. They have fantastic range and can easily cover the screen. That effect makes it great for mobbing, and it is, with the more enemies, the deadlier it becomes. Because of how its effect works, you can even ride its overheat cap to up the number of bolts that fly out and increase its damage even further. Unfortunately though, it can't come enchanted, the reroll machine just doesn't recognize it, but when that gets fixed, it'll be even stronger. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of 10 must have legendary weapons at Chaos 35, and good luck getting primordial versions of them. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.